Hello and welcome to Indian Express. I am Nikita Jain. Um, Indian Express, in partnership with GE Healthcare, is leading the awareness drive under its Cancer Care Matters initiative. And uh, through this campaign, we wish to throw light on where is developments in the field of cancer care and prevention, and how technology is helping in precision care and treatment provided to cancer patients. Uh, today, to speak on this matter, we have a very special guest. Dr. Shravan Subramanyam, President and CEO, GE Healthcare India and South Asia and Managing Director, Wipro GE Healthcare. Thank you so much, sir, for joining us today and uh, talking about this initiative and how technology is driving the future of cancer care. Nikita, thank you so much for having me at this program. I think it's very, very important for all of us and especially over the last um, uh, 18 months when the, the country and indeed the world has been ravaged by the pandemic, uh, we still need to make sure that the other diseases that are affecting our people are well taken care of. And I think cancer is one of these where, you know, there has been a tendency to not take care of oneself um, uh, due to various reasons, good reasons that people could not access, uh, you know, have access to hospitals or they were afraid of going there. Um, but now it's time to, to shine the spotlight back on it and make sure that our people are getting the care that they need and deserve. Uh, but, you know, I, I want to start uh, by asking you uh, something that is very, very prime. Uh, what are the challenges for cancer care in India, if you can tell me something about that? So, um, overall, if you look at it, Nikita, uh, from a population standpoint, our uh, population as a country has been evolving, it's been aging. And, um, and if you just look at it from independence to today, our average life expectancy at birth has practically doubled. And um, as the population ages, they have different uh, diseases that they would be, you know, typically affected with, say, in the 40s, 50s, 60s, and so on. So as you're aging, cancer has become a major disease of prevalence that we are starting to deal with. So um, while this is happening, also our healthcare system is evolving. The last 18 months, we've seen a lot of acceleration in what the healthcare system uh, is doing and can do. And, but this is going hand in hand with some of the other you know, disease prevalences that we are seeing. Um, in the meantime, technology is also developing. We're able to create more intelligent solutions, um, affordable solutions, accessible solutions while keeping our eye on quality of uh, clinical outcomes and quality of patient life after the intervention. In the meantime, uh, while all this is going on in the healthcare front with patients and disease um, patterns evolving and changing, we are also evolving as a country. Uh, we're becoming a, a manufacturing hub. Uh, we have a lot of innovations, as I said, in affordable care, you know, frugal innovation we talk about. Um, so we're also looking at changes in health and, and lifestyle. People are moving to places where, you, you know, they, they have cleaner air, uh, uh, if it's possible. But, but similarly, people are taking better care of themselves. Preventive uh, health has become a priority for many families. And uh, last but not least, we're also seeing the intervention of the government, whether it's in, um, uh, you know, regulators prioritizing the healthcare agenda or increasing the spend allocated towards healthcare. So, so many of these things are uh, changing. But um, to answer your question, fundamentally, it is a question of, you know, the population, Population is aging, cancer is becoming a, a major issue for us to deal with. And this is across the board. You know, we, we have an opportunity in uh, screening, in diagnostics, in uh, therapeutics, in monitoring. The overall management of the patient journey in cancer has become um, of paramount importance to us. Dr. Shravan, you've spoken about the challenges. Um, if you could just give me a brief idea about how is GE Healthcare working behind the scenes to meet these challenges? Yeah, so uh, it really depends on the challenges, right? In At, at one level, we talk about um, awareness, okay? So there's very low level of uh, patient awareness. And uh, so we need to do a lot of work in that space in advocacy. Um, and, and cancer is also, it's something that it has a socioeconomic uh, element also. And uh, therefore, we have issues relating to access and um, availability of technology in the right places, available of technology at the right time also. 
Um, I, I'll share an example now with the pandemic, right? We're looking at some data from um, that that particular time, you know, March, April, May, June, when when um, people when, when the country was really ravaged by the pandemic, um, people were not able to go to the hospitals, or they were scared to go to hospitals or, and, and seek treatment, and they were postponing their decisions um, on on taking treatment. At that time, you, you know, people who might have been treated in stage one or stage two appeared in stage three or stage four. So a lot of work needs to be done for uh, awareness. And um, of course, also in terms of uh, technology, uh, we have a lot of tools that we can uh, work on. So number one priority as a society, I feel that GE and other companies are working on is in the advocacy space. You know, we need to debunk the myths. We need to empower patients. Um, as a clinician myself, um, I'd, I'd say on a personal note, um, an empowered, empowered patient can be a very healthy patient. So I want to make sure that the message is, uh, is, is sent. And that's why, of course, we're having conversations like this. Uh, next, when we look at technology, you know, GE is one of the foremost uh, technology players. And, you know, we've been in existence for over a century and we've been evolving. Um, one of the first companies to introduce uh, X-ray technology and X-ray has evolved so much, right? Uh, all the way up to um, PET CT, PET MRI and so on to support our um, cancer patients. So we've started launching a lot of new technologies that can address this challenge. And um, in India, across the country, we have a very strong uh, base for screening, as well as diagnostics, as well as monitoring of patients. Um, we're also seeing a lot of um, progress amongst the hospital community. Right, There are a lot of multi-speciality hospitals, uh, a lot of outpatient facilities. So we're making sure that we are available. Uh, to address the need depending on where the patient is in their journey. And uh, we're also investing significantly. Uh, we have a presence here where you know, we have a technology center where we're developing products um, in India for India, as well as in India for the world to address the cancer uh, burden, not just in India, but around. Thank you. That was, that was beautifully uh, articulated. Um, since we are uh, catering to a larger audience, uh, who might not be aware about what is precision health, if you could tell me something about that and, and also how does it help to deliver improved treatment and cure? Excellent, excellent question. You know, precision medicine is a term that has been around for some time. And as a philosophy, it's not new. Uh, the idea is to ensure that the right patient gets the right treatment at the right time. Right. And, um, and and this can be applied across different uh, disease areas and care areas. It could be for infectious disease. Um, way back in the day, uh, doing a culture sensitivity and analysis will help a clinician offer the correct antibiotic for a particular patient. That same mindset is approached for um, cancer also. Now, cancer, as we knew it, say, 20, 30, 40 years ago, um, has also been changing because we've learned so much. We've learned so much about the molecular elements, the genomic elements, um, the, the imaging elements, you know, to a, a molecular level, we're able to see what's happening. And with that, the treatment modalities are also changing very significantly. Uh, 25 years ago, um, Nikita, when I was in medical college, we probably had only a couple of different ways to treat, say, a lung cancer or breast cancer. Um, and, and, you know, there would be radiotherapy, um, uh, perhaps some chemotherapy. But now there are so many different types of treatment which are very specific to a particular, uh, you, you know, genetic mutation or a molecular uh, attribute of cancer or where it comes from, whether it's primary, whether it's secondary. Um, and so, so the thesis is that for each patient, they might have a very different type of uh, uh, treatment protocol depending on their age, depending on um, the, the, the population characteristics, their environment, uh, depending on their family history, uh, depending on the, uh, the pathological diagnosis, you, you know, the histopathology diagnosis, the genomic diagnosis, the, the molecular imaging diagnosis. And then based on that, there will be a very, very specific uh, protocol. Um, so that is a space where GE has a very strong uh, presence. You, you know, we, we, we talk about teranostics, for example, right? So identifying a specific therapy based on the imaging diagnostic. So that is one example of uh, precision medicine. We also are using digital tools and um, uh, artificial intelligence to provide clinical decision support uh, tools for our clinicians. 
right? Because now, as I said, you know, compared to 25 years ago, we have so many different attributes and so much data coming in. It's not humanly possible for one oncologist or a radiologist or a specialist to know everything about every patient. So we need to rely on these uh, digital tools to help us consolidate and assimilate all the data and then make the right decision based on the available tools. Um, in that space, you know, GE has made some acquisitions as well as, uh, uh, you know, is investing in, in our own products and our own development. And, uh, uh, you know, we have in India, we have uh, this Edison accelerator through which we are incubating startups that are doing work in the AI space to help us with uh, cancer diagnosis and treatment. We made an acquisition uh, globally of a company called Zion Exa, which specializes in what you asked, you know, in, in uh, precision medicine. So this is evolving. It's very exciting. There's a lot that can be done. There is a lot that is being done. And um, we're also seeing that the clinical outcomes are improving tremendously. Year on year, we're seeing uh, better data that are coming out that are helping us with precision medicine. Uh, since Dr. Shravan, we're talking about uh, technological advancement, uh, can digital health meet the challenges of accessibility and affordability in cancer treatment? Absolutely. Now, what we've seen, of course, now giving the pandemic as an example, um, we've seen that digital health has helped patients get access to clinicians when it was very difficult to do so. From the simple, you know, telemedicine where, you, you know, you're, you're seeing a, a, a clinician on a screen such as this and having a conversation um, to slightly more complex um, areas where we're able to send images across now digitally. Um, and, and, you know, teleradiology has been around for decades. It's nothing new. But we have new layers that are being added to it. Uh, like, for example, GE launched an app by uh, Predable. Uh, over the pandemic, which is an AI-based tool which can help to diagnose and manage the uh, radiology image of a CT scan of uh, a COVID patient much faster, right? It helps the radiologist to make a quicker uh, decision and provide the outputs. Uh, similarly, these kind of tools can be applied towards other disease areas also. So we're seeing that happening in cancer, um, in different types of cancer. And here we're also acknowledging and understanding that um, throughout a patient's journey, there are so many different technology um, innovations and interventions that can have a play. We need, we need um, a baseline that can help a clinician uh, understand the entire patient journey. So for example, we have oncology tumor boards, which can now be conducted virtually, which is pulling in data from the pathology lab, from the radiology center, uh, from the electronic medical record, and then providing some predictive elements that a clinician can use to um, improve their decision making and eventually clinical outcomes. This is a challenge also, uh, because in a country like India, data are not evenly available across uh, health systems. There are some, you know, some hospitals here which are amongst the best in the world. And in some uh, places, uh, particularly in rural areas, they may not have access to digital tools. But with new technology such as 5G coming in, we might be able to uh, leapfrog um, some of the legacy systems and make these data available. And once data are made interoperable and uh, consistent across health systems, that will be a very significant opportunity. I will draw your attention to the National Digital Health Mission of the government, um, which has this view of democratizing um, healthcare digital data. And that can be a very significant moment for us. We are calling it in healthcare, you know, the UPI moment, like UPI was for uh, FinTech. This could make a very significant difference to us uh, over here. Uh, again, our Edison digital, uh, our Edison accelerator um, is inviting a lot of startups to help us in this journey and make sure that these innovations can uh, sort of uh, accelerate the value creation across the healthcare ecosystem. Dr. Shavan, I want to be a little optimistic here and ask you, can universal healthcare become a reality in India? Uh, I mean, uh, even if, if so, what is needed for this in terms of public-private partnerships? Yeah, by the way, my, my overall outlook in healthcare is very optimistic, um, as you might have gathered. And, and I think the journey towards universal healthcare is also one step in that direction. Um, what is universal healthcare trying to solve? Right, We want access to healthcare, we want it to be affordable and we want to ensure that quality 
is also not compromised when we are making this happen. And all of these keep changing. You know, uh, what is affordable, what is expensive today might be affordable tomorrow. Uh, but we need to make sure that quality is not compromised and we're constantly improving the clinical outcomes. So it's not just about reducing the cost, but keeping the, the cost manageable while improving outcomes. Um, so with that sort of as the goal for patients, um, what the government has done to start with, with Aishman Bharat, that's a great step positive step in that direction where, um, you know, nearly half our population now has access to some level of uh, health insurance to pay for the basics, you know, your primary health, secondary health um, for a family is taken care of. We are still a significantly underinsured uh, country, right? We, we have people who work in corporate jobs who have uh, health insurance. We have uh, Aishman Bharat for sort of the bottom, bottom 40% or so. But there's still a significant chunk in the middle that needs to be in, insured. So when you talk about universal health care, paying for it is one part of it. The next step is, OK, um, now I can afford it. Do I have access to it? Can any patient have access immediately within a short distance to primary health and then maybe a little longer distance to secondary and tertiary specialized health? Um, these are the questions that we need to answer and address. And I think the country um, is doing a pretty good job of it. We're seeing across the board, you know, um, 700 plus districts, um, all, all our people have access to some level of healthcare, but that needs to be improved constantly. Uh, there is a significant opportunity Anita, for public-private partnership here. And we're seeing that happen across several states in um, India now. There's some very robust public-private partnership uh, um, activities that are going on, which is making healthcare far more accessible to the general population than it, it used to be. So um, I think we're, we're going in the right direction. There's still a long way to go, but we are, uh, we are making some steps, uh, positive steps towards universal healthcare. Uh, Dr. Shravan, I know you're a busy man and I, without taking much of your more time, I'll, I'll ask my last question to you. Uh, if you could just give us a glimpse of the future of cancer care in uh, India. So, uh, Nikta, I think cancer care is going to be uh, a, a community um, participating event. You know, it's it's not about any uh, specialized center. It's not about any individual specialist or one company. Um, just as some of the best outcomes for a population over the last uh, 75 years since independence have come through public health initiatives. Uh, I think the same is going to happen for cancer, where it needs we need to mobilize the entire community. Having said that, there is a very special role for the hospitals, for the clinicians and the technology players to make sure that as a community, we have access and we're able to move the needle forward, as I said earlier, for universal health. Specifically, if you're looking at the future with technology, uh, I think there will be a role for artificial intelligence and machine learning to, um, to accelerate the, the diagnosis and, um, and, and the assimilation of data, uh, providing clinicians with the right uh, tools, the, the decision support tools. We're seeing a lot of improvements in, in precision health across the board, not just like what we're doing in GE is in imaging technology. The resolution is getting better. Uh, the speed to diagnosis is getting better. Uh, using the AI tools, we're able to uh, put different data sets together and, and offer predictive models much better. There's a lot of integration now. You know, there's a convergence between the, the imaging lab and the pathology lab and other aspects of the patient journey. You know, so the electronic medical record, these are all coming together. So the digital play, the data play is going to be uh, very substantial. With precision uh, diagnostics also comes precision therapeutics whether it's uh, radiotherapy, whether it's, um, it's immuno-oncology and so on. There are so many of these new uh, drugs that are coming up, which are far more precise, for which you need a very precise uh, diagnosis. Um, so overall, all of these things are evolving. Um, they are converging and, and the patient is very much at the center of uh, this. So I think uh, to a short answer to your question is um, the, the technology um, enhancements that we are having over the last uh, few years are going to continue into the next uh, few years. We're going to see a significant leap and uh, therefore improvement in clinical outcomes as well as the public health response to cancer um, is also going to have a very significant impact on our overall cancer journey and outcomes as a population. That sure looks like a bright future for us. 
thank you so much dr shravan for speaking with the indian express and for doing everything that you are doing in the cancer care matters initiative thank you so much thank you so much a pleasure hope one little word that means the world to so many of your cancer care team's most vulnerable patients hope is powerful and empowering hope inspires but what inspires hope you do because you believe every patient deserves the very best you have to offer no matter the odds and you believe in the power of precision medicine to change the course of lives for the better you inspire us along with our many technology partners worldwide to maintain our focus on cancer research to keep innovating and integrating cancer care throughout the patient journey The development of increasingly effective early diagnosis technologies enables us to help you more quickly identify suspicious lesions, reduce time to treatment, and ultimately improve clinical outcomes. As your cancer care partner, you inspire us to develop solutions that help you optimize the workflows and efficiencies that improve the patient experience, keep multidisciplinary teams digitally connected. and develop advanced analytics and AI enabled devices to quickly detect critical findings. We are committed to innovation that ensures you always have the tools, technology, services and trusted solutions your cancer care teams need to share the most important prognosis of all. Hope